Good afternoon, Baba. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm good. How are you feeling? Now? Right I'm, now. How are you feeling? I'm feeling relaxed. In this moment? Yes. Feeling relaxed. Feeling good. Yes. You look well. Thank you. Everybody keeps commenting about how young you look. They can't believe that you're over 80 years old. Thank God. What do you think uh, is responsible for that? Why do you look so good? Even though most people who are in their 80s look a bit disheveled, tired. Oh, I, I experience tiredness on and off. But uh, why I'm like this, I think, let me say, it's because of God's work. But secondly, uh, you look back and go into your, <coughs> your home with my father and my mother, how they looked. My mother was short in stature and my dad was tall. But then my mother looked much younger than her age uh, before she died. And my father, he didn't live long enough for me to say what I'm saying about my mother now. <laughs> so I wouldn't know. I don't use anything. I eat no in fact there was a time uh, I was thinking I was looking too thin. And I asked people, what are the things I can eat or use as medication? Somebody said, okay, there's a medicine called wait on. <laughs> so I went and bought with this years ago, mm -hmm. yeah. I ate a lot of it, nothing changed. And uh, then somebody said, eat a lot of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I believed this too, so I went and bought, and bought chocolate. chocolates and still nothing happened. So, uh, but some other people said, you must be crazy, you, you are okay like you look, why don't you stay like you are? Why do you want to become fat? I said, there's richness in being fat. You know, I thought, if I'm fat, I, I, will, I, will, I will feel much better. But <laughs> it's not true. So since that time, I believe, OK, I have to uh, accept my fate. And your, and your good genes. Well, your good genes and your natural good looks. Well, well, <laughs> well God knows. So I'm here. You know, people say, I mean, Yoruba say, you, you meet your palm lines when you are born, but you don't know who has made it there. Mm. So, so I, I, and now I'm beginning to, well, I've started knowing too well that to be slim is not a cause. So, that is Thank it. you for that. Um, so I want you to explore <clears throat> uh, the record I mean, I know where I am, and you know where you are, and I know who you are, and you know who I am. But just for the our public, yeah. Um, please introduce yourself. Yes, uh, my name is Muraina Uyelami, a traditional title holder. I'm the Asa of Iradiji, my hometown, and Asa is just in second in command to the ruling Oba. And my duty, part of my duty, is to be like an errand boy. Not errand boy per se, but second in command to the king. They can never call me king. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the chiefs. We were over 50 of us. I'm the head of all these chiefs. And uh, before, when we're having a meeting with the Oba, a regular meeting, um, the, the, the chiefs who have to come to my palace, I have a smaller palace. They call it palace because that's the name, Afi. I have an Afi, and the other has his own Afi. But my own Afi is much smaller than that of, <laughs> that of the other. That's where we meet, we deliberate upon what's going on in the town. If there are you know, settlements to be made among families, and if we cannot cope with it, we take the matter to the Oba. So that's what I do since this past over 30 years. 
And uh, most of us know <clears throat> you as an artist. Yes, yes, I've been, I've been an artist so, for about 60 years, yes. It would be, nice uh, be nice for you to share a bit about your, the beginnings, yeah. about how your childhood, your influences led you down that path to becoming an artist that we now are enjoying and celebrating today. And even a bit about how the crossover between your work and life as an artist as well as a traditional ruler and mm -hmm. how they work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want you to be as free as, as you can. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. yeah. When I'm with you, I'm always free. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't frighten me. So. Um, where do I start? Where do you start? Well, <clears throat> I grew up uh, being um, the only child of my mother, even though my mother had four issues before me during her first marriage. They all died. That must have been the reason why she left her first husband to come and marry my father. father. So, and as soon as she got married to my uh, father, she was, she first had a miscarriage of twins. twins mis After twins, I came. I would have become the Ido, mm. but Ido would no twins. I became. So then uh, my father, normal small time farmer and a good hunter, and my mother sells uh, livestock like uh, chickens, chickens and small goods, things like that. And this is in Irabiji, my hometown. I mean, that's where I live up to today. So after my, <clears throat> I, I went through, excuse me, it was, it was my grandfather who insisted that I must go to school. And I said, okay, fine. Then but I remember the first day at school, my grandfather, after, after 11 or so in the morning, he was thinking I must be hungry at that time. So he left home and came to the school. I said, why are you delaying her? I mean, why are you delaying him? He, he must hungry. be hungry now. So, well, they told him that he said, there's a dining hall and they have food here, so don't worry. So he sat down there until we left the school before he was tutored and uh, told he has to wait. And it's not, not too late for the boy to come home. So I hold that to that. Uh, Grace to the old Baba Miyagba, my, my old grandfather. Uh, that was uh, 1952 at uh, St. Peter's Anglican School in Miragiji. That's where I started my schooling. And right from then, I remember in uh, primary two or three, I became the school's band leader because of my interest in music. And that went on and on to late in life because um, in my hometown, they would hire me out during wedding festival, different local juju groups. Um, we have one orchestra called New Jersey Orchestra. In Iraq, with then we have High Glory Orchestra. Wow. Strange, strange names. Titles. But each of them will hire me. They, will, they are going to play the double toy or the, the bongos, mm -hmm. they call it. So they say, I'm very good at that. So at, at the end of the ceremony, each ceremony, they will either give me Crawler, like something like Coca Cola, but it's okay. called Crawler. Oh, wow. K R O L A. Crawler. And uh, they give me a box of matches. Uh, and I was not doing it for anything. I just just fun. Just people realize I can do it. So I was so happy that I was invited to come and do it. So I don't expect anything. And I have to say this too. And it led to something very beautiful. Like the contributions. You know, how my parents support me. 
anything I want to do, if I tell them, they may not know much, or they may not even know at all, anything at all about it, they always give it blessing. Mm. So that gives me the confidence. The, the, the confidence that I should continue. Unlike some parents who will say, no, what are you doing? Don't you know the musicians are like beggars, blah, blah, blah. They never discourage me. Mm. And I want to say thanks to them. Thank you. So after that experience, I, I left uh, school and I wanted to go to a secondary school, which I did. But because of lack of enough fund, I couldn't complete my secondary school there. So there was this uh, uh, external, uh, they call it something, let me remember, where you, where you go, you are not a bona fide student, but you can go and take courses, then you, you pay the, the guy teaching. Like an internship or yeah, something? No, no, not, not as big Apprenticeship? As, no, no. Anyway, I did my GGC. Uh, ordinary level. Mm -hmm. I passed. And later on, I did all sorts of jobs, you know. Not that my parents couldn't take care of me, but I wanted to be on my own. I wanted to do something. So I remember my first job while attending uh, classes. Is yeah, uh, that of um, a petrol attendant. You know, petrol attendant. It's funny, but this is the place where I met Duro Ladipo. Mm. So it happened one day when the Mbari Mbaya was set up in 1961, 62, I was selling for it. I just sent to... It was opposite the, yes. Yeah. The, the center. The cent, the oh, center. wow. That was an Italian petrol station. I think it was... Esso. Yes. So, yes, Esso. It's it Italian. Yes, it became... Yes. Yeah? I think it became Ajipo or something later yeah. down the line. Really? Yes. I, I wouldn't know. I think so. So, <clears throat> so it happened one day that uh, it will come with the uh, mobile motorcycle. Motorcycle, mm. you know, mobile. <laughs> or is it? Um, there is one like motorcycle, but not really. You have you 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 start it with your leg, okay. and then as it moves, you put the gear in front of you, uh, and then you have to start walking. You know, I don't know how to. Put. Anyway, you really like people will come with that kind of a motorbike, so I will. I was set for him, and he was managing uh, uh, a cinema house called Ajax Cinema, you know, Shobu. And I am regular movie goer. You know, I, I love most especially Indian Indian movie. I was in love with one one of the actors called Kamran Kumar, and I adopted that name. Many people call me Kamran, Kamran, up to tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Except that nowadays in the comments, I said, remember I'm a chief, not, not <laughs> So, so <clears throat> it was really like, like that when uh, one day somebody else came to buy fuel from our station. We were two, you know, and we were staying, we were sleeping in the, in the petrol station. Because people can come any time of the day, day or night. You know, you have to wake up and sell. So at times we we'll, we'll pretend as if we are deep asleep, but then they will knock on the door. <laughs> but they will have to wake up, otherwise they will not stop. So one day this guy came and uh, my partner, may so rest in peace, said, "Okay, he wants to buy petrol." Then. He brought, I mean, my partner brought an empty can. So before selling the petrol for this guy, he, had, he put some, maybe like one quarter of a liter mm -hmm. in the can. empty can before putting the Onosu into, in, the, car. into the car. Mm -hmm. And the guy mm -hmm. knew and saw what you were doing. So we were in trouble. 
gosh. It's a long story. Let me cut it there. But then, during that depot came later and tried to settle the palava, mm. and we thanked him. And not long after that, that I went to Mbari to view one play there, putting up a, a, a Christian, like a katata, mm -hmm. you know. I was in love because I go to movie, I like performing. I, back at school, I was a band leader, mm -hmm. so I, I love this. So it was Dula Dipo who was to me. I will come here. I saw you are interested. Why don't you come and join us? And that's how I, I left otherwise lucrative uh, <laughs> job <laughs> as a petrol attendant and, and joined the Ladipo Theatre. Wow. So there, what they were doing there is what I love too. I've been playing music before getting into that. And I've been doing drawings for local barbers. Mm. No, before then. So, and it came in 1964, we had this experimental art uh, workshop with uh, Georgina Baya. Now, Georgina Baya used to be Georgina Betts. She's, uh, she's Briton. And uh, she came to Nigeria with another man. I don't know him. A British, I should think. And they were in Zaria. The, that is before the experimental school or whatnot. Sure. So, Georgina sure. Baya met Uli Baya in Lagos at um, an exhibition center in Marina. That must have been 1962 or thereabouts. I don't know much about the relationship, but we saw them together. and. Uh, the Ulibaya was so old and uh, Georgina was very young and we were wondering what could have happened to but then it wasn't our business. <laughs> so uh, that's how Georgina came and uh, there had been an experimental school at Mbari in Ibadan, you know. There was this in Bari in Ibadan, at Adama Singba in Ibadan area. Ulibaya, Walesho Inka, Chino Asebe, Ezekiel Falele from East Africa, uh, all this, they form the, 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 the club together. It's mainly writer's club. Mm -hmm. But then they added the uh, visual arts. Yeah. So uh, I was there as a member of Dula Depot Theatre. I was just observing everything happening. A bit far off, you know. I wasn't close to the the gurus. You know, I, I cannot because who am I? <laughs> but I always like to observe things. So that's when we would, uh, this guy, Dula uh, Depo, decided that we should have our own Mbari in Oshobo. Mbari originally is name of a shrine in the east. Mm -hmm. Uh, when we took our own to Shogu, we didn't call it Mbari. Call it, when you say Mbari, it will have no meaning. And then we added Mbayo. Mbari, Mbayo, meaning if I'm able to see this, I'll be happy. So that's how Mbari Mbayo came to be. So, and Ulibaya is a very good friend of uh, Duro Ladebo. Ah. So many things come back. You know? Going. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Dula Dipo was a, a school teacher, a pupil's teacher. He had lived in the north. He lived with one man, Austin Peters. And uh, that's where he learned the art of acting and composing music. So when he got back to Shogu, his birthplace, he was still teaching. And you know, when Ulibaya left London in 1950, he got a job at Ibadan. So, he's so adventurous. You know, he, he wasn't you know, having a good time at Ibadan. Because to him, I did 
In fact, maybe you you do the transcription and we have it published one of these is because I did an interview with him in 1985 when I visited him in uh, Australia. I still have uh, the... So, anyway, Ulibaya left... Ulibaya then dis decided to design a program that will enable him travel around Yoruba land. That's how he escaped from the university uh, atmosphere. So then he was able to meet a lot of Yoruba Obas and became friends. He likes, he likes mixing with people. He said to me when I asked him, look, it was like he was still in London or Europe. He couldn't feel that he's already in Africa. That's why he designed that uh, course. Mm. And so good, um, this man, Mr. Armstrong was the then uh, head of Department of African Studies at the University of Ibadan. So he approved that uh, course that he has designed, not knowing, it, not knowing that it's the course <laughs> of his own personal interest, which turned out to be something everybody embraced. You know? So and Uli was somebody is is uh, beautifully crazy. Uh, he could see something out of nothing. Uh, he's a literary man and leave, leave you to do your thing. If he's, um, if he's, if he's pleased, he will just nod his head, he wouldn't become mad. And uh, if he doesn't like something, he'll just he wouldn't look at it. But he's always willing to assist. He started with uh, the poets. I think he was the first to publish those that we know are the great uh, the literature people nowadays. I wouldn't want to name names because uh, they may not want to agree, but I know it's, it's, it's the truth. He published their, their first set of works and uh, they, are still, they were friends until he died. Uh, but the, the good friends he made with uh, somebody like Uncle, Uncle, I call Professor Wallace Rika, Uncle, Uncle, my good uncle. He knows me very well. That he, he assisted me a lot. And he was one of his best friends. In fact, when Ulibaya was in Germany, when we started Iwalewa House, that's uh, like a cultural center which was attached to the University of Bayreuth. I was the one that assisted uh, Ulibaya, uh, Ulibaya to set it up. And uh, it's still there up to now. Um, it's, it's growing even though the, the, the research center it has been turned into kind of research uh, mm -hmm. institute, but they still have exhibitions. Lately, I was there to, to mark the 40th anniversary of the establishment of that, of that uh, thing. So Uli, to go back now, Uli became a very close friend of Duro Ladipo. So Uli likes uh, his beer. He stopped by to have a beer and chicken. And so that's how I knew that. That's the time I knew them. And uh, he knew Duro Ladipo was into performing arts. Okay. He did a lot for Duro Ladipo in terms of using traditional themes, using local talents, not imitating the, the comedian, just that type of uh, actors. You know, where you have opening glee. There were notable performers like uh, Papa Hubert Ogunde uh, and uh, this guy, uh, Ogumola, Ike Ogumola, of the famous Panwan Drinkard. After, after the book written by Amos Tutuola. And so when Dula Dipo started, Uli advised him not to follow the route, the, the, the route of uh, his predecessors. 
that he will, he has to look inward and do something that is immediately identifiable with uh, the local culture and uh, tradition. So he suggested titles. You know, what Duro Ladiko used to do is a moral play, like uh, you, you have you have uh, patience to gain the world, mm -hmm. things like this. I don't think so. But as soon as he got together with uh, Uli, the titles changed. Like the, on Oyo, city of Oyo, we, we worked on three pieces, like Obaku. So that's the story of uh, Shango as the ruling Oba of Oyo. And uh, Obaku, so Obawaja, uh, that's like uh, the, the king has died. And then Obamoro, the king has captured uh, Oros. Now why Oyo alone? That's how we started. That one told us about the story of Shango, the first one, Obakoso. Obakoso literally means the king does not hang. Mm. So, so it was so powerful, it was endowed with some powers. When he's angry, that is Shango. When he's angry, the flame comes out of uh, yeah. his mouth. And uh, you must have seen local adaptations. Some, some ghosts yes. nowadays. <laughs> now, I also have the soundtrack to Obakusu, a uh, play, a performance. Yeah. It was given to me as a gift recently. I'm going to show you oh, okay. which okay. the drew, like the theatre yeah. performed in yeah. London. Oh, yeah. The, and, and the then, audio. Oh, in 1965. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. I was in. And your name is on the. Yes, <laughs> but I was just playing a supporting rhythm instrument. <laughs> Nothing big. That's a big deal. So, <clears throat> that's how Guru Dadipo became a uh, uh, theater director, mm. getting himself busy with traditional folkloric uh, titles. And he did that and he did it very well. So, after that, I left, I left the theater. I left his theater in 1966. Uh, and uh, the experimental school was in 1964. Uh, at first, we were using Oba's Palace as the selected, the discovered artists like myself, uh, Jacob Afolabi, Rufus Ogundele, Adebisi Fabomi, and Jima Buraino. Then, at first, you know, what surprised us was that the guy who was like uh, our tutor or our teacher, never agreed that she was our teacher, that we have given her a lot of uh, uh, inspiration to do her work because her work was never like that before coming to Nigeria. Maybe it's complimentary, I don't know, <laughs> but I believe what she told us. So at first, we, our works, we were all working with, uh, um, what is it? Uh, if I remember clearly, yeah. Paint, paint, you know. Uh, paint with, mix it with water, you know. We were doing all sorts of things. But as time goes on, the, the experts, that is Georgina and uh, Uli, they will come to the studio. And say, so when we see one of them say, so, so, we believe her. We have done something good. Because we ourselves, we are just creating. But then, we, we never knew they were leaving us to have that freedom until we were able to, to, to see or to, to have, I mean, to recognize our inner, 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 inner self, you know. And that, that took some time. And then we went in uh, di different ways as time goes on. I mean, I, I did uh, etching, I did uh, um, uh, drawing from the back, I did, uh, what do you call it, so many techniques were taught, but I chose oil painting 
as my major thing since that time. Started using wood, wood fabric to make his own artworks. And Jima was working on the tabletops with beads. You know. And this is uh, this, uh, this is how we we branched out. And today everybody knows. I mean, it's, there's one thing that personally, you know, after those experiments, I had the opportunity of attending other workshops in overseas. Like in 1974, I had the opportunity of, you know, attending workshops in a place which is called, uh, I will remember now, they did oh, Otis. Otis Art Institute in Los Angeles. And then there was another place in Berlin, not the same year, mm -hmm. um, Academy der Kunst in Berlin. And then one other great uh, dramatic, I mean, uh, graphic artist came, Rova Rosen, came, he was invited by Rudy Bayer to Shobu. There we did a lot of. Uh, Etchings, etchings. Uh, so, oh, I've, have I not mixed up? <laughs> <laughs> no, you haven't. You know, this is that's probably the longest. Um, you, you've talked about. You t you took us from childhood to really the heart of your creative practice. Yes. And um, I know that today, of course, in addition to serving your people, you find time to paint in a studio. In fact, I have. I've, Good time now to do that. Unlike before, I may be invited in Berlin or or US or India, but now I, I since this past thirty years, mm -hmm. uh, I'm stable, mm -hmm. not traveling. In a year, sometimes in the past, when I calculate how many days I use, I spend in a year, it may not be up to nineteen days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> But then, anytime I travel, I, I don't just travel. There must be a reason for my traveling. And people, I like to, I like visiting places, and I seek, I seek. I don't want to believe that uh, I'm an African, I'm Yoruba, I'm all that, whatever they call me. But I am a human being like every one of us here. If you look upon me. Badly, I, I, I would believe you don't know anything, mm. you know. Mm. So I seek for peace. I seek, I seek. What you seek, you find. There's nowhere you go that you don't have that power of negativity, and there's nowhere you cannot find power of positivity. Mm. So I may feel bad if somebody uh, behave towards me as a racist. I won't I will only say that it must be it must have been I mean he may have inherited that attitude from from my parents. So I wouldn't want that to bother me because there are so many other people out there who are disloving yes, and mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. so so I want my peace and contentment. The personal philosophy definitely comes through a lot in your work. How, how much time do you spend these days actually in the studio painting? Oh, it's hard to say. Nowadays, I spend more time on like before. Why? Because uh, I cannot host a friend when I'm working. It's not possible. Not that he or she stays with me in the studio. Even if I leave her or him in my living room, I won't settle, I won't be able to concentrate. So, and in our area, even more so when I'm a chief now, they don't, they can't even come to you at, as early as six in the morning. <laughs> it's me, yo, I, I'm the one. Ah, I say, welcome, I have to say. <laughs> you know, so, then they come, they don't have to make an appointment before they come. So you do, if you you tell me, you dare not tell them that. But if you tell me you are coming, no, no. Then it will mean something entirely different. 
you are very hostile, you are not a good person, you are not. So things like this happen. I may, I just have to stop, stop what I'm doing in the studio and go attend to, to them before I may not be able to go back again that day. That can be for a week or two. But I may be lucky at times. Nobody will show up. So I will have time to myself. When I'm able to concentrate, I can be a bit faster. Mm. Yeah. You, you talked a bit about, well, a lot about um, Joe Ladico. So I would say that maybe he was perhaps the biggest influence in your journey to being an artist. In the beginning. In the beginning. So yes. in the beginning. Yes. And then while you while you were now an artist, would you be able to shed some light on some of the other sort of um, tangential influences, even though it was not artists, a collector maybe? Um, I mean, you talked about your parents. Your parents for sure were a big influence because oh, yeah. they were supportive. Yes, Drew Ladipo as a fellow creative who saw something in you and encouraged yeah. you. Yeah. And then... Now, years later, imagine deep into the life of being an artist mm -hmm. and making and speaking and traveling. Mm -hmm. Who who else would you say was you know pivotal as an influence? Uh, it's hard to say. Influence. You see, it's funny how I at times you see something that you like and you don't you don't remember it, you know, but subconscious wise, you really have it in your head. Mm. Uh, my works, as as early as uh, 60s, like 67, I had an exhibition in, uh, in Edinburgh, Scotland, a group exhibition. And there was a critic in one, in one newspaper, the newspaper who likened my work to uh, one of the European masters, was it Modigliani, <laughs> or oh, strange names, mm -hmm. you know. And others would say, Roth, Roth, I don't know. So, and I was laughing. But then, at the end of the writing, he said, said it is complimentary, because those people that he mentioned were influenced strongly by African art. So, but even then, I don't know these mm. names. Yeah, I remember uh, 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 I did Odun Sulaiman mm -hmm. and uh, his friend Akishnaya. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he visited me uh, in 1982. Yeah, the collectors were, that's the time they started collecting yeah. my works. And uh, who was ah late uh, Professor Shengun Adewoye, mm -hmm. who was like my principal collector. He was uh, at the University of Ife, where we met. Uh, he fell in love with my works. He is a is a, um, a scientist. Yet he, he collects uh, artworks, not just Nigerian artworks. Even he collected Picasso. You know. mm. It's now late. You know. So they so continue to rest at least. Mm. Mm. And uh, who else? Uh, I'm sure you're going to edit your. No, we're not editing. Mm. I want you to just speak like we're having. We're just having a conversation. I'm going to go very soon into the juicy part of. I wanted to ask you um, some, I wanted to, one of the things I wanted to achieve with this moment, because I feel very grateful that you you have the time to spend with us in Lagos, uh, you know, moving around is not as easy as it used to be. No, no. You know, a trip to Ragoji uh, six years ago mm -hmm. is not the same now. No. Um, I think that was the last time I visited and I, I, I owe you a visit and hopefully we'll all come in March when By you're... The it's going to be a crime if you don't come. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a bit about what's happening, what's going to happen in March. You're going to be honoring some icons in Iraq with you. Yeah, posthumously. Yes. Yes. Um, see, like 
I, I've been talking about Dula Repo, Georgina, and Suzanne. Mm -hmm. and so I think they did a lot, not not in projecting my works or or Shubu or et, humanity. You know, we should look beyond uh, local uh, effect of their contribution towards the advancement of uh, art. Not, it doesn't have to be Yoruba, Igbo, Japanese, or India. Mm. So, just, you, humanity. just for humanity. So, and I knew the impact made by them in my life. So, the setup I set up now, half five, at the New Visual and Performing Arts Institute that you really supported. Uh, these are the things, like things I want to be doing there once in a while. We've done a series of programs. There was a time when I invited popular or famous uh, performing artists like Lere uh, Paima, um, Eda, like Asha uh, Wotos, Tore Maka, Toyi, like so many of them, I gathered them together. I made each of them talk to the audience about how they became artists, performing mm -hmm. artists, mm -hmm. as part of our program. One of the early programs that I supported mm -hmm. uh, at five. Mm -hmm. And uh, things like this I want to do. This is, if I have my way, I'll be there 24 hours, you know, because it's now the time for me to pay back, to pay back in the way I know how to pay back is by encouraging other people and to show people that being an artist is not is, is not being uh, uh, a vagabond or never do well. Somebody because mm -hmm. you know, people don't believe in the past, you know. They say, "Oh, right now." and the likes, you know. <laughs> yeah. In a derogatory way. Yes. <laughs> at that time. Yeah, at that time. I remember vividly, we had this chance of going to um, perform at the first Commonwealth Arts Festival. And when we came back the 13th day, the people in Oshobo, they said, don't mind those boys. How can you go to Europe and come back within 13 days? <laughs> it's a lie. They went to Lagos and hide themselves. <laughs> because, you know, during those periods, when people travel, maybe they go by boat yeah. or by ship, it takes Forever. months. Yeah. Then we say we went. But then later on, they realized that we actually traveled. But you know what we did on arrival? We went into our truck, uh, Dola Deport National Theatre. We parade the town with Emma Abuwa, Ebu Osola Rawa, Ibata Mbuwa La Ngoke, Emma Abuwa, Ebu Osola Rawa. I'm not a good uh, literary translator, but roughly it means uh, continue abusing us. You people, you detractors, you. you that's your business. And it doesn't grow on our skin. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't grow on our skin. Continue abusing us. Then we will love it. Then at this the time, the time now that you are abusing us, that's the time we are growing up. We are growing up and we are, mm -hmm. are continuing mm -hmm. to grow up and up and up. They come out and look at us. You know. They wouldn't say anything. And then before before we left Britain, uh, we had a uh, a contract with one um, equity, British equity. We became members of British equity, actors equity, mm -hmm. so that that will enable us to collect our dues and our uh, the money they have to pay us. But if you don't join that uh, equity, they will not give us the money. So, so member British equity. So when we come back home, we say we are MBE. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so, I mean, gone are the days, you know. So, because, you know, it's always good to, to know about your suffering after you have suffered. Mm. Mm. Not when you are suffering. That uh, life, uh, we will take like uh, one shilling, one shilling, 12 pence, you know, of this time. Uh, we have a group within the group, we call it Onjelagba, who is the eldest. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll buy balls of gari, you know, from one seller, they will buy stew from another. So it makes it so cheap. So we buy the uh, eba, like the gari, and then we buy from another another woman the sauce. Mm -hmm. So that way, we only spend like uh, six pence, mm -hmm. which is half of one shilling. So the remaining six pence, our group within the group. We contribute it together and uh, buy a keg of palm wine. So, <laughs> so that we enjoy ourselves. And it's like that was the end of the whole world. And after performance, before the beginning of performance, usually we go to schools and we, we know they have all these uh, dining halls with benches. You know. So you have to drop your cap on your, the bench you are going to use as your bed. So that after having this uh, emu, we call it emu, that's the palm wine. After having it, we come back, we are fulfilled. We just sleep off, we are happy. But now when we talk about it, uh, so we were suffering. <laughs> you know, that's what I meant. You know. It was quite quite a time, you know, and I'm happy I passed through that phase, you know, I'm really happy. Is there anything you, I mean, it's so nice to just see your face light up as you've been reflecting, and it's been nice the last few days as well. You seem like a man with, um, who's fully fulfilled. Yes, yes, I have no regrets. Yes. You made it, you, you made, you made a great decision. You, when you think, but when you think about it, like yes, I, I chose correctly to be this man, to be the artist, to to follow this my path. Yeah, is that how you feel? Yes, yes. And what else would you still like to do? I'd like what I need to is to continue with what I know how to do best, my work, and then. Help others if they need help. What I mean, I'm not, I'm not a money man, but if I, if I can help young ones, and that has been my emphasis mm -hmm. since I set up that uh, art park. I would because I know how I started, and I want to do, if not exactly what I went through, but. I would like to instill in people certain disciplines of what they know how to, to do best. In my upper eye setup, we don't, we don't just take anybody anyhow. We invite them. We try them out in different areas. You know. If we know they are good, they are better at something, we would discourage them from going the other way. So, but funny enough, many of these youths, they are lazy. <laughs> Buhari, I agree on that. They, they, are, they are lazy. Mm -hmm. no, 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 we are no mechanics. We don't do soap. We don't do... <laughs> but I deal with what I know how to mm -hmm. do best mm -hmm. in the area of visual and performing arts. You know? So we have... In the area of uh, visual arts, we encourage uh, and crafts. Mm -hmm. We encourage people to come and learn how to weave. Ashoke. Mm -hmm. And we're 
we are making it. But some of them now they're on their own because I started two years ago. And uh, apart from Ashoki, Adire, also for uh, batik making, tie dye, we have a we have a unit for that. Then I bought numbers of um, straight sewing, sewing machines. Mm -hmm. They learn the art of making dresses, you know. And most of the works they do, they are the works we brought from the the other units like uh, the Ashoki weaving unit and the batik making unit. So they bring them to the sewing area, they make dresses out of it, some traditional, and I encourage crazy ones to, that has to, that who have no tradition, but something they create themselves. And funny enough, people begin to like, mm -hmm. to like uh, these crazy ones, you know. I call it crazy because I said, don't follow the rules. Just cut out, put where the neck comes out, and <laughs> so and some are disastrous. Some are really beautiful. Mm. But with time, you know, they grow into becoming more creative or like that. So apart from that, in the performing areas, we encourage drumming and drum making. Why drumming and drum making? Not everybody can perform. Maybe they will not be able to perform. Make but the then drums. they can make the instrument open a small shop or kiosk. They can sell the, the, the thing is for them to be able to be self-sufficient. Mm. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's what uh, we're doing there. And over a piece of uh, two acres of land, which I bought several years ago, I've been able to put all these infrastructures on there. And a huge, large, black space. But then people to fill it are uh, very difficult to find. So that's why if I can make it all free, for them, then I, I'm sure I'll be able to impact this thing on many more people. You know, if it's there, when you come, you will see. Come on, just uh, so just to end this this segment, um, and I will come, and we'll come as a group. We'll okay. all we'll all come. I think it's important that we all come to this magical place called the Ragweed, okay. which which of course gave birth to you and which you've never departed from. No. So on a on just a well not final note, because we will still talk, is okay. tell tell like the world about the Ragwiji. I mean we all have a partial love for where we come from. Yeah. Sure. But you have you've institutionalized the Ragwiji through your art, through your visual, yes. through your service. Yeah. What where is this place? What is it about this place? Okay. Ragbiji is a Yoruba town in the southwestern part of Nigeria. And uh, as you were told, uh, it was founded around 600 years ago. And um, basically, they are known for being farmers. That's their profession. Like in many other Yoruba towns at the time. And uh, we were very traditional, apart from the fact that uh, we have Yoruba religion, very, very strong in that part of the country. Um, famous amongst this uh, uh, religion, they are all Orisha religion, but the worship of Shango, Ogu, and Oshun is the most uh, not notable and even the masquerades too i don't want to call it masquerade because a google is the name mm -hmm. but the the Oyibo man when you masquerade it's, there's uh, it's not really positive mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. so a google is a google masquerade is masquerade i want to talk about a google so this is where we have annual festival to remember the ancestors, the dead. They represent the spirit of the dead. Mm. So every year, we have almost every compound has its own egogo. 
Now, the, what happened then, uh, you gather your family members together, you offer prayer, you, you make feasts, no matter how little you mm -hmm. make feasts, and a member of that family will go and wear the costume of that family, that uh, uh, family, uh, Google's family. You, you wear the mask. Once you are inside that costume, you become the yeah. representative of the departed soul. So even as at that time, the father may have to prostrate a sign of respect to the master, not minding that it's his son inside. that is inside. So very, very important. And we celebrate this around May every year. So I will also inform you when we are among the towns and villages that still celebrate it very strongly around Ushobo, Iragudi, Lesha. It's Iragudi that do celebrate it. In uh, other areas, yeah, the others, because they are either Christian or Muslim, they kill the, you know, they keep that uh, uh, urge to celebrate because it's, it belongs to the fetish people. I see. Uh, this and that. Um, you go to hell, you, you go to. So they discourage a lot of people. But I say the same set of people <laughs> in the night, they go to the Babalawo, the, 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 the Oracle priest. Please help me. Look, am I going to. I think I want to start great. Will it be profitable? The so called Christian or Muslim mm -hmm. will go to the Babala and the <laughs> So uh, I will call them Yoruba Muslims and Yoruba Christians. Mm -hmm. And in some other parts, uh, yeah, once you are, you are Muslim, yeah, you, you even want to be better off than the Saudi Arabians. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, yes. But I believe in spiritual power, which is Olodumare, and that's Olono. And if it's that, if that is Jehovah, yes. If that is Allah, yes. If that is Usanobua, yes. If that is Obangiji, yes. But I have no church or mosque that I go. Maybe if I find people like me, and we have plenty, then we can create our own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> place of worship. Mm. But the best way you worship is show thanks to your maker. maker. You, know, you can do it. I do it every day. Even if you are woken up by hunger, you have to thank, be thankful to Olodumare for allowing you to get to, to, to feel. And you know the next thing you will say that now I have thanked you for waking me up. Help me find something mm. to put in my belly. In my belly. <laughs> then God will surely get you something. But it's not good to blame God. Uh, ah, why have you done this to me? Well, that has that has been like uh, being a, an ungrateful somebody. Mm. So I'm always thankful to my old man, with no pastor, no imam, and God loves me. And he's closer to me than I am closer to him. So I have no regrets. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.